What is up beautiful people, it's your boy Mizko here and over the weekend I received a very quick question from a student of mine and he asked, is there any way in Figma to do conditional prototypes, i.e. prototype if someone selects one or more required list items, the, we then enable and show the next button. Now, sadly, we can't create logic and operational prototypes as of today, as of recording of this video, maybe in the future, but there's two things I want to let you know. First, there is definitely a workaround where you can emulate the idea of logic within your Figma prototypes. The second thing is that if you do want to create prototypes, or more advanced and more realistic prototypes for developers or for stakeholder walkthroughs, then you can definitely use a dedicated platform called Protopie. And I've created a tutorial step-by-step, -step, link is in the description, and I'll walk you through how to create a really advanced, more realistic prototype with a bit of logic as well. But if you want to stay within the Figma environment, let's start writing guys so I'm gonna jump into my Figma and here is a very quick UI that I put together to try emulate and explain to you guys uh, Binu's concept so he told me he wanted to create some sort of component with a few checklist items and if we select one we then show the next or continue button so I went ahead and just added a few more scenarios so if I select buy groceries we can then uncheck all items and if we uncheck all items, we can take it back to the default state. If we then select both of these items again and hit continue, we can then wipe them out. And this feels like a prototype with logic and with operational rules, but really it's just an interactive component. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did this and I'll try to fit it in in this short uh, video. So once again, we've got our UI over here. Inside this UI, you can see that I've got an order layout with a heading and also a list uh, list items, right? So we've got three items inside this order layout component, which will group it together. Now I'm utilizing a few components from my own design system, the Ship Faster UI design system. You can find this on the Design Ship website. If you purchase version one or version 1.3, any of those versions, you will receive an, an email from me this week. It's 25th of January, 2022. As of this video, you will receive an email for, uh, from me this week to get a free upgrade. So make sure to check your emails, guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and recreate that prototype and recreate some of that logic. So I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna move this uh, checklist to the top left corner. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command D, duplicate this checklist. And I'm going to think about what was the first interaction that we needed to create. Well, when I tap on take Nori out for potty, which is my dog, I want to turn this item on, this checkbox on, right? So I'm going to go to my checkbox, all right? So I've got my checkbox and I'm turning this on. And then what I want is a button to appear. So selecting my checklist, I'm going to hit shift I and I drop down a button. And remember, all these components are being pulled out from my design system. So that's why it's a lot quicker. So then in here, I'm going to hit uh, type in continue. Whoops, sorry, I actually need to turn off the the actual um, icons over here. So no icons and we'll make it large. I'm going to type in continue and I might just make this a large text as well. There we go. And the second thing I want to do is I actually want to wrap this button, shift A and call it CTA. So we've got a, a CTA block and I'm going to make the spacing in between each item 20, no padding on the sides. And I'm going to go ahead and fill the container. And then I'm actually going to align everything to the right hand side. And then inside, by selecting the button, I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the buttons and I'm going to change the style to link. You can change it to whatever you want. And I'm going to hit, um, what was the thing? Uncheck all items. And then I'm going to change the color to maybe 500. And that should work. Whoops, 500. There we go and I might make this a large text as well. So the last thing I need to do is set the direction for my CTA block to horizontal. Perfect, and I'm just gonna fill the container and there we go. Figma has a few issues around that. So align it to the right hand side and then I'm gonna go ahead and hug my contents. Boom, so I've got my second state. Now if I tap on take Nori out for potty, we will check, turn on the checkbox and then we will actually fade in the continue button but I don't want this uncheck all items to show just yet. So I'm gonna make the opacity 0%. That's state number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this checklist. I'm gonna go Command D, duplicate it, move it to the side. And this is going to be the third state. So when I tap on buy groceries, I want this checkbox, right, to turn on. So I can turn this on. And then I'll actually want this button, which says uncheck all items to also fade in as well. So that is one of the one of the key logic or rules that we want to apply. And then the last state is actually 
if I hit uncheck all items, we bring them back to the original state. But if I hit continue, I actually want these two items to disappear. And I also want the buttons to also disappear as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these two items. And I'm gonna go and change the height to one pixel because I actually want it to collapse. But I can't change it because the resizing is set to hug contents. It's overriding the fixed height. So I'm gonna change this to fixed height, change the height to one and then change the opacity to 0%. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the button, the CTA uh, button as well. So change the hug to fixed, change the height from 52 to one, and then change all the uh, content inside by hitting enter and selecting everything inside the container to 0%. There we go. And we've got the fourth state as well. So from here, it's actually very, very easy. It's very, very simple to do. So we can then make sure we just hit option L on our keyboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this checklist to default state. And then I'm gonna rename this one to um, selected. All right, it could be selected, whatever you want. And then for this one, it could be selected, selected uh, more. And then this one could be continued. All right, obviously we can think about the name conventions. This is not the purpose of the tutorial. The tutorial is to show you how to create this our logic in our prototypes. Highlight them all, go to components, create component set, that brings it all together, right? So now we just need to go ahead and link them up. Now there are a few ways that we can go ahead and link this up. For this checkbox, this checkbox is already an interactive component uh, built within our design system. So if I go ahead into our media and show you the actual input over here, if I show you this prototype, you can see that these are already linked up. So inside a prototype, if I ever click on a checkbox, it will automatically animate and turn the component into a checkbox. Um, so I don't want to check. So in this prototype specifically, I just want someone, as long as they tap on this entire row, I will move them over to here. So in my prototype, I can go ahead and link this over to the second scenario based on a smart animate with an ease out of 300 milliseconds. And then if I go ahead and tap on buy groceries, I can then move them over to this state, right? The same settings, smart animate is out 300 milliseconds. If I click on uncheck all items, this takes me back to the default state. Smart animate is out 300 milliseconds. And then if I hit on continue, that will actually bring me to the end state with smart anime is out through 300 milliseconds. So once that is all done, we've actually recreated the logic and emulated this experience. I can go over to my main, another file, hit shift I, type in checklist, and actually I might rename this, this component to checklist new, just so I don't override the old one that I showed you previously. So in here, shift I, checklist, and I can show you checklist new. If you then go ahead and preview this um, actual prototype, we hit take out Nori, shows me the thing, buy groceries, uncheck all items shows, turn them off, turn them back on, hit continue, voila! We have created a prototype that emulates logic or operational logic in other words, for our developers. And this is not the perfect solution, but it works, right? Because remember, when we are trying to communicate things and ideas and concepts to our team, it doesn't have to be the perfect scenario. We can sort of create a scenario where there are a few different uh, situations and we sort of help guide them so they can sort of feel it and sort of experience it. But on the other hand, if you do want to create something a lot more interactive, dynamic with many different scenarios and sequences, you should definitely check out Protopie.io. Now, once again, the tutorial is in the description. You should definitely check it out. But hopefully, guys, you've learned how to create some fake logic within Figma. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in another video very soon.